United States or outside Ghana, you know that if you say you're from Africa, you get very ignorant uh, questions. Are you an African princess? And I used to get that. Are you an African princess? Because apparently I have to be an African princess or my father has to be a king for me to attend school in the United States. Coming to America. Yeah, coming to America part two. Um, <laughs> do you have internet? Do you have YouTube? So I used to get a lot of ignorant questions. I was in high school in New Jersey in the United States. And my classmates would come up to me and ask those sorts of questions. And it used to piss me off all the time because, come on, we know so much about America. We watch their movies. Um, and not just America, I mean the West. But they know nothing about the continent or any country for that matter. In fact, they even think the whole continent is a country. You know? So um, at that time, I decided to put together a presentation that I was going to get to the school to put up a seminar and make the students attend so I could educate them on the Africa I know. So I called it the Africa I know, and I described how Northern Africans look, how Southern Africans look, how you can even tell by the way the person looks, by just looking at the person, you can tell which part of the continent they are from, the food, the cultures, the traditions, and how different. I mean, we are not homogenous, but or to the West, we are, you know, do you know my friend, uh, in Sule? How do I know Sule in, in Mozambique? How? Right? Um, so I made it a mission to, to educate my, my friends and those around me because I realized there was, a, there was a gap. There was a knowledge gap, a real one. That, and for me, it was dangerous because, look, it, it, it was based on stereotypes. Stereotypes that were perpetrated by the media, by the news, Everything that had to do with Africa was either war, um, diseases, the African kids that the fly is always flying around, you know, the hungry kids. It was always negative. But I'm from Africa, I'm from Ghana. We, we like our food, we watch our sports, you know, we have our parties, we enjoy life, we really think Ghana is very expensive, more, even more expensive than, you know, New York. And New York, the Bronx, if you go to the Bronx, is dirty, they have potholes. But they always make it seem like anything African is less than, anything African is negative. So I, I remember I, I decided that I was going to put together a YouTube show and call it The Gap. Yes, and I was going to bridge the knowledge gap. Uh, that did not happen. <laughs> that idea quickly left my mind. Um, after schooling, when I came back to Ghana, I, I mean, as Tupi mentioned, when that, uh, Press a TV, former vice at one, and then a little at TV3. Even before I came on there, I left TV3, then GH1, and then finally I decided that I was going to do my own thing. Because I realized the productions, I mean, not to um, bash them, any of those networks, because they are companies and they need to protect their interests, but I realized that production was very um, censored. You can't talk about certain things. And for me, I, I recognize that we live in a society where we do not like to discuss certain topics. Topics that are uncomfortable. Topics about abortion. We act like they are not there, but these are real problems that, as a society, we are faced with. Um, homosexuality, queerness, um, politicians, and the way they siphon money, you know? Conversations that are uncomfortable but need to be had. So we decided that we were going to put together a show that one, was going to put Africa first, uh, was going to be Afrocentric, or represent the Afrocentric zeitgeist, was going to, we are going to put our best foot forward. But really, we're going to control the narrative. We are going to tell our own stories. We are going to highlight the beautiful places on the continent, hence destination Africa. It's always about sitting in the plane and going to the UK, or going to America, or going to the islands for vacation. We have beautiful places on the continent. So destination Africa, for, for example, is supposed to highlight the beautiful places on the continent and promote intercontinental travel. Then we have Ask Angela, where the youth, young people can ask any question. No, I will attempt to answer. If I don't know, so I don't know, right? Because I don't have the answers to all those questions. And then, of course, the conversation where we discuss the topics that, like I mentioned, are uncomfortable but need, need to be had. Um, so yeah, that's the yeah, Andromeda show in a nutshell. Um, I had an amazing team assist me on this journey. It's been a year in the making. In fact, over
quite a couple of years, really. But working actively, it's been over a year in the making. We've cried. Where's my editor? If my editor is here, I look, we came to blows. <laughs> Almost came to blows. Editor has cried, I have cried. Um, we have I've had fights with my director. Where is the journey? <laughs> We've had fights. Production in Ghana is not easy. If you know, you know. Working with people is not easy. And today, we are glad to say that we are here. I hope you enjoyed the first episode. We tried to ease you in with the first um, episode, so we did not go hard on the topic. But the subsequent um, episodes, we have uh, women and sexuality, for example, for uh, the second episode. So we're going to talk about women and their sexual agency. That's something we don't discuss in Ghana. If you're a woman, a man can be stoic and, you know, here yeah, is a man, but a woman, you know, you are submissive and quiet, and you're supposed to be, I guess, sexist, you know? Um, so that's an example show. If you have any other questions, I'm here to answer them. Um, Dick Duck, you have a question? <laughs>